Well, the good news is this wasn't the worst basketball game that I've ever witnessed. But most of those were played either at Prairie Hills Middle School or at the Hutchinson YMCA, not in Bramlage Coliseum. That first half was brutal for K-State tonight. It set them back in really the entirety of the game. And this was a team that, number one, can't afford setbacks to begin with, with the lack of scores that they have on this team, how much they'll turn the ball over. A lot of the things that they struggle in is already a setback enough. So spotting Oklahoma an early lead and not scoring until the under-12 timeout is a massive problem, and they were really never able to rebound from it. I'm Mason Voth. This is Drew Galloway from K-State Online. As the Wildcats fall tonight 73-53, to the final score against Oklahoma. Porter Mosier back-to-back wins over K-State now where, or I guess – he, he, he did lose yeah. in between the two. I forgot how late two it was last year. Two out of three, though, and the two losses, I mean, they're soul searchers for K-State. They spent a lot of time in the locker room before they came and talked to us last year in Norman. Tonight, they were a little quicker to get in there, but the, the mood seemed pretty low from David Gasson and Cam Carter. Jerome Tang tried to kind of keep himself, you know, in good mood, but you, you could just tell by the way things were coming out. This, this team is in a bad spot right now. Yeah, it's just a disheartening loss, I think, because we talked all day Sunday. We talked about it in the preview yesterday. You talked about it in a pick and preview today. This was a game K-State probably needed to have. This is a quad two game at home against an Oklahoma team that was sputtering. To, to be honest, Oklahoma didn't do anything really that impressive that I'm like, wow, they are like clearly better than K-State besides how the, end, how the score looks. Because the Oklahoma didn't really shoot particularly well, they didn't. They shot pretty terribly from three. If Oklahoma shoots better from the free throw line, this game is even more of a laugher. So this was a, again, and kind of how we said in the preview show, this is a game like K State. It was all about what what K State could do and how K State would look. And that first half was pretty pretty brutal to watch on the offensive end of the floor. And then because of how bad they were on the offensive end of the floor, their defense really suffered in the first half as well at the end. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you think about how bad K-State was offensively and how it just felt like this game's a mile out of reach. At that time, K-State was only down 8 nothing. Like, their defense was there. Now, they ended the first half. The defense had gone – far away from them. OU finished by making seven of their last nine shots in the first half. They were shooting 50% from the floor. Things had improved for the Sooners, and K-State just wasn't able to catch up. And Tyler Perry was a bright spot offensively tonight. He was more aggressive. He finally knocked down some shots. But now you just ask yourself, based on what you've seen from Tyler Perry this season, did he waste his bullets in this game? Like, now are you going to get a spell of three, four, five straight Tyler Perry games where you're like, Okay, why is this guy going one of seven from three and scoring six points in the game? Like, K-State needs him to step up. The only problem is they also need other guys to step up, and tonight that wasn't the case, and it's kind of been the same deal the last three games where you just don't have enough guys kind of pitching in to go and get you the win. And I, I think, you know, we could talk a lot about just how bad this game was tonight, but... I think everything that we saw in this game is just a microcosm of what is taking place right now in K-State season. They got to 4-1 in Big 12 play. You start to change your tune and what you think about this team. Now they've dropped three straight. The last two, they have not been competitive. It has been ugly. And really in the last three, there have been different things that have gone on in the game where you question what this team is made of. And to some extent, like we know how good of a coach Jerome Tang was last year, but you do start to question in some ways – the way that this staff is leading and coaching this team this season, whether it's the way that they've handled media obligations the last week and a half now where Jerome Tang has accused Iowa State of cheating or, you know, supposedly, that's what the reports indicate, and then calls out a referee by name in a game where you're getting blown out by Houston. And now tonight, you know, he called a timeout with 30 seconds left and they were down by 18. He says it was the light into his guys. It seems like there was maybe a little bit of something going on between him and Porter Mosier. So just a lot of focus right now that isn't even really on the basketball. It's about the mannerisms of this team and how things are being handled. 
And Jerome Tang put tonight's loss on himself, said he didn't have the guys ready. I think what he was alluding to there was the focus of last week was probably too far away from basketball for this team. And in some way, he and the staff probably created more of a distraction for their team, which this team doesn't need any distractions. They already struggle to rebound without distractions. They already struggle to shoot without distractions. And right now, they're struggling to win basketball games with those distractions. So... They're in a dark spot, and they're going on the road this weekend to Oklahoma State where you're probably going to end up in a rock fight with them. That is a terrible basketball team. They also are getting beat by 20 points in the state of Kansas tonight. They're just on the road in Allen Fieldhouse, not in their own building with fans behind them. That, I mean, tonight felt like a must win if you thought you were an NCAA tournament team. If K-State doesn't win on Saturday, they're in a really tough spot. And I know Jerome Tang said after the game he doesn't feel like things are getting away from this team, just the order that things are happening in is changing. I understand that. That is good coach speak and a good message to send your team and certainly can be true. If K-State comes out and they win the next two, which the one would be Monday against Kansas in this building, Sure, you're probably in the same spot you would have been had you gone 2-1 and one by beating the teams you were supposed to and losing to KU. But in some way, we can be realistic because our words do not matter to this team. We do not have to lead them on a daily basis. We can be honest and have a conversation about this. Not beating Oklahoma at home means you might be on the wrong side of the bubble. Getting blown out like this and having an ugly loss it might mean something far worse than just barely missing out on the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and you talk about Tyler Pear being the bright spot and nobody else really doing anything all season long. It's been the three-headed monster of Cam Carter, Tyler Perry, Arthur Kaluma. Cam Carter and Arthur Kaluma tonight go three of 20 combined for nine points, eight turnovers, and nine fouls. That, that's just not going to get it done in a game where it felt like – it never felt like K-State was really truly threatening – because they had so many chances to really put game pressure on Oklahoma. But when the game got to seven and immediately ballooned to 13, and, and this is where I take a little bit of uh, a step back and I get a little concerned going forward, it just felt like K-State quit after the game got back to 13 because you could just tell on, on the body language of some of the players that were on the floor that they just wanted the game to end and weren't very interested. And to be honest, that, that, that's probably my biggest concern is not really the offense because sometimes some nights you just can't shoot well but you can always control how you play and how your effort is and, and the effort in the last six seven minutes was pretty gross to be to be completely honest arthur kaluma had one of the worst inbounds passes i have ever seen on a basketball court overthrowing tyler perry into four different oklahoma players and then nobody gets back on defense after that and that was right after the lead got to 11. So you worry about this team mentally after this game, I think, more than physically. Because this is, this is a real like soul-searching, like, you need to find something kind of game. Yeah, we'll see how it goes for this team. They've got a lot to, to get figured out. And you don't need your best to beat Oklahoma State. But what you do need is good focus, a good mentality in terms of how you're approaching things and keeping your head up. And you just start to wonder if this team has that right now. So a big opportunity for them for to, to respond uh, against Oklahoma State on Saturday, 1 o'clock in Stillwater. We will see how it goes. And uh, from that point, I guess everybody can start to make their decisions on what the last half of Big 12 play will look like because Saturday ends the first half of the conference slate and it starts the second half. And this team right now, they're going to need to kick it into high gear if they want to get to where they want to be and certainly where some thought that they could be this year, which is back in the NCAA tournament. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, one final note in not such a good way. We've talked about how they, this team struggles with a lot of things. You asked uh, Kellis and I before uh, we started doing this who the leading rebounder was for K-State tonight. Do you want to highlight who it was and why that might be troubling for K-State? Uh, it was Dorian Finister again with six. I believe he was tied with one other player. Cam Carter. Yeah, with Cam Carter with six. And, and it's troubling because Dorian Finister played half the minutes of some of the other players because he only played 19 minutes and 35 minutes. And he, again, it's where I get back to effort and enthusiasm are free in basketball. You can really control those more than anything else. And rebounding is more, mostly an effort thing. And, and 
Jerome Tang kind of said it best that it was only 12 to 8 in second chance points tonight in favor of Oklahoma, but it felt like the 12 points for Oklahoma off of second chance came at a huge time, and that, that really killed K-State at the end. And another troubling thing is Oklahoma shot 39 free throws, and I believe that is three consecutive games now where K-State has allowed 30-plus uh, free throws, and now uh, opponents have shot 112 free throws in the last two, uh, the last three games, and that that is not very good. This team has to figure out how to defend without fouling. We can complain about refs all you want, but at some point, if it's a big problem, it is a you problem, and this team cannot defend without fouling right now. And to some extent, that plays into a lack of effort, a lack of hustle, because you get beat by a guy or you're not you know, as ready as you need to be, he's going by you, so you just kind of hack or you try and grab and you run into some problems there. So we'll see how it goes for K-State, how they try and bounce back from this, but they're going to need uh, quite a bit to, to get things moving in the right direction. And I don't know, at the end of the day, this Jerome Tang said it after the game, this team just has three scores, and we've known that. And sometimes – they're not the most reliable three scorers to do it together or even get two of them at the same time. And if K-State doesn't have at least two of them doing something good, you're probably going to be in a dire spot, and that's been the case the last couple of games. So we'll see how it ends up working out. Tonight was another case, too, where you see that the floor of this team is pretty low. The ceiling is very high. The, the ceiling is a team that, that beat a top-20 Baylor team in – could win some other big games at home coming up, but the floor is the team that played Nebraska and now played Oklahoma. Yeah. And those were two very, very brutal losses. Uh, just didn't feel good to get beat like that in your home gym, and we'll see uh, what the response is coming out for K-State because they really it's not like they responded beautifully after getting beat like that by Nebraska. They, they came back on the floor, and they struggled against some not-so-good teams. So... We'll see how it goes. Uh, you mentioned the, the hustle thing earlier. That's why Dorian Finister does deserve a shout-out. If That is why he plays. That Dorian Finister is not, in my eyes and probably a lot of people's eyes, a legit Big 12 type of player to be getting 20 minutes a game on a team that wants to be better than just in the Big 12. You want to be a decent team in the Big 12. But Dorian Finister plays because – he is not the tallest guy on the floor, but he's your leading rebounder, and he does hustle, and he does do a lot of those things. That's why he played early in conference play, and that's why he continues to be out there. Uh, as frustrating as he, a guy like that can be, because he has limitations, he has to play right now because at least he gives a damn. Him and Tyler Perry were the only ones that looked like they gave a damn tonight, to be, to be honest. Yep, and that is a real problem, and that is – yeah, you can say the players have to do that, but it, it's also on this staff to find a way to get this team motivated to do it. So that will do it for us. That is Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. One final note, I just want to say the University of Oklahoma, they're a bunch of frauds. Uh, if you thought that the coaches' pullovers looked interesting tonight, it's because they weren't really made by Jordan or Nike. Uh, that was I confirmed that after my suspicions were risen uh, during the course of the game. Just kind of a funny thing, you know, like if, if you're big, bad Oklahoma heading to the SEC, don't you think you'd have money for like the real deal? Or maybe you'd kind of have the clout for Jordan and Nike to give you the real thing? Kind of embarrassing if you ask me. Although not as embarrassing as a 20-point loss to a team that had just lost two straight games at home in your own building. Cats need to get it fixed. They play Oklahoma State on Saturday. We will be there full coverage over at kstateonline.com. Plenty of football news for you right now. I'm sure you're all craving it and need it. Uh, so football schedule came out, recruiting news. Head over to kstateonline for all of that.